It's my high honor to welcome all of you to the 2019 inauguration of the 28th Commissioner of the Texas General Land Officer, George Prescott Bush. Today, this ceremony marks the latest link in a chain that reaches back across Texas history. Today, we will inaugurate the leader of the state's oldest continuous elected office. The General Land Office, founded in 1836 by the brand new Republic of Texas, plays a vital role in the everyday lives of all the people of Texas. At this time, I would like to invite Chaplain Rich Steglin to deliver the invocation. Thank you, Admiral Inman. Let us pray. <clears throat> Divine Parent, we have assembled today on the small patch of sacred soil with the voices of history beckoning for new answers amid the trial and trail of hard questions. But this is an era in Texas when the doors of opportunity awaits, but it will take courage to walk through and declare what must be done for all who live in this great state. God push Commissioner George P. Bush to embrace the idea of in matters of style, swim with the current, in matters of principle, stand like a rock. Thus helping each of us to sense the urgency of it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. And if we are in turn to, to turn the page and write a new chapter called Difference Making, it is imperative to include in our daily vernacular to know God is to do justice, because a straightened back can't be written. Therefore, God instill in Commissioner George Prescott Bush and in us the prophetic words of Jeremiah when he dared to verbalize in his day as ours the mounting challenges of a nation in need of clarity when he exclaimed, We sorrow not for those who have no hope. As this day progresses into the arms of a darkened evening, remind us, God, only when it's darkest can we see the brightest stars. We pray also, God, for those who act as responsible guardians of our local communities, even when the duties they perform on a daily basis is not always acknowledged or appreciated. And lest we forget those who are in harm's way, a long way from home. And so we pray for those who streak across the turbulent skies, move underneath the forceful oceans, march on the hot desert floors, or survive in the dense jungles of the world. Be with them, God be with their families as they look through the windows of anticipation of their loved ones' safe return home. Help them and us to remember, no matter what, hope is our strongest weapon. To God be the glory. Amen. May I ask you please to join in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the recitation of the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Please be seated. Uh, please retire the colors. We are here today to pay proper respect for a successful outcome of election and swearing in for a second term as land commissioner. But in Inman's view, we are really here 
to honor lives of public service and long tradition. His great-grandfather served with distinction as a senator from Connecticut. His grandfather served this country in so many different roles, first in the Navy, then uh, in Congress, then as ambassador to the UN, representative of China, director of central intelligence when I first had the privilege of working with him, then as vice president, then as president, but very honorably in so many years that followed. His father and his uncle both served as governors and his uncle as president. As George P. was finishing his education, he was interested in serving. And I played a very small role in his being commissioned as a naval intelligence officer. I didn't know when I did that that he was going to get called active duty and serve eight months with great distinction in Afghanistan. Came back, embarked on multiple careers, but the call of public service was what demanded. But it wasn't just his own path. I've watched with great interest as he recognized the changing demographics in the state and his effort to help build support for getting young Hispanic Texans into the electoral process and elected to higher office. I have been um, less than entertained by some of the media coverage over the last four years. But I've come to reflect on that as probably uh, an accurate reflection that this is not his last political office and that there's potentially, not only for George and his family, but most importantly for the state and the country, we'll see more leadership. But first, we're gonna enjoy four years more as land commissioner. And at this point, um, may I invite the honoree to come forward and for the oath of office. And Judge Fitzwater, um, you are going to actually administer the oath. Uh, this is a historic manner for which we gathered. Honorable Sidney Fitzwater, the federal judge for whom George P. Bush clerked uh, after law school and who did swear him in four years ago, will join the commissioner and his family on the dais for the administration of the oath of office. Ready to take the oath if you'll raise your right hand. After me. I, George Prescott Bush, do solemnly swear. I, George Prescott Bush, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of Commissioner of the General Land Office. Of Commissioner of the General Land Office. Of the State of Texas. Of the State of Texas. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution and laws, the Constitution and laws of the United States, of the United States, and of this state, and of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Commissioner. Thank you, Judge. Appreciate it. Thank you for going. Thank you all very much. Distinguished guests, family and friends, and to the people of Texas. These past few weeks have been challenging for my family as we mourn uh, the loss of someone so loved by so many. My grandfather, George Herbert Walker Bush. I appreciate the kind words and prayers that have been offered to me and, and the rest of my family over these past several weeks regarding a life well lived. As we enter into this legislative session, and into this new year, let us do so with the spirit of his uh, accomplishments in public service 
in the back of our mind. The work that we began four years ago was not easy, but it was important. I set out to direct the Texas General Land Office to build a more perfect state. We took on some complicated challenges and addressed perennial questions like, how do we find more funding for public education? How do we create a more vibrant economic climate in the state of Texas? How do we honor those who wear the uniform? How do we prepare for the next natural disaster that could impact, impact our great state? And yes, how do we save and strengthen our historic artifacts, including the great treasure of the Alamo? Along the way, we proposed a series of policy solutions at the GLO that helped propel our state towards its remarkable miracle. And the results speak for themselves these last four years. We invested record amounts in the public education system through the Permanent School Fund. We expanded oil and gas development on state-owned lands and created even more energy jobs than ever. And now Texas is the is the, is the leader in, in this industry globally. We transformed the way that we interact with our military veterans and building a ninth veterans home as we speak for those in their golden years. We turned tragedy into triumph by housing over 60,000 Texans in the wake of the most impactful natural disaster in our state's history. Finally, we took some important steps towards preserving the most visited site in the state of Texas, the Alamo. These achievements weren't always popular but it was the right thing to do. The road to these policies was seldom smooth, but it, was, it takes us right where we wanted to be. Yes, in the last four years, as you have read, I've uh, been criticized, and I wasn't afraid to go in the fire. And far from being burned by that flame, I was strengthened by the heat. And I begin this term more certain than ever that our path is correct and more confident in where it may lead us in the future. My friends, the time has come not just to talk about the last four years, but to begin building a brighter future in the next four. The foundation has been laid. The blueprint is working. And now we must construct a better future for all Texans. In the coming years, we'll work with the legislature and other state leaders to build upon the success. To improve public education, we'll continue to invest record amounts through the permanent school fund and the available school fund. To strengthen our economy, we'll expand oil and gas development in an environmentally responsible way while diversifying streams of revenue for that next downturn. To support our military veterans, we'll do everything we can to serve those who have served us in the highest role possible. To better prepare for the next natural disaster, we will fortify our coastal barrier systems and begin the process of simplifying the recovery stage for Texans. And to save the Alamo, we'll continue to preserve the church, the long barrack, and build a world-class Texas-sized visitor center for the Phil Collins exhibit to tell the true story of the brave Tejanos and Texians that, bought, that fought in that final fight for freedom. But as we do this work, we will do so in a spirit of cooperation and community. And I look forward to working with state leadership and legislators to help make that happen. After all, the state belongs to us all. As I've often said, this isn't just some random place on a map. It's an idea in the hearts of our people. This state is truly set apart as a place where anyone can be somebody. It's a state where investing in a dream can lead to a lifetime of dividends. And it's a state that is blessed with natural resources, but yet our greatest resource is our people. These last four years saw us work together to start important work. Important work that impacts the lives of Texans at every stage of their life. From school kids to young entrepreneurs, from military veterans to displaced coastal residents in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. The work that we are doing at the GLO matters every day in every way. So we look back with pride and we look forward with promise. In the next four years, we have the chance to build an even better state, and we will. We have the ability to create even more opportunities for even more Texans, and we must. And we have the obligation to continue the work of transforming the GLO to help Texans chase their dreams and to change their destinies. And we are. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to be your 28th Land Commissioner. Together, we'll build upon this promise of our state to every corner, from the high plains to the valley, from the piney East Texas woods to the busy streets of El Paso. Yo acepto el reto y los invito a participar. Trabajaré con entrega total y dedicaré mi tiempo y mi mayor esfuerzo 
a cumplir con la grandeza futura de Texas. Gracias de todo el corazón. Que viva Texas. Thank you very much. May God bless you. And may God, can God continue to bless the great state of Texas. Commissioner Bush, congratulations. Know that you carry the hopes and prayers of all Texans with you as you continue your, your important work. Now may we conclude the ceremony again from Chaplain Steglin giving us the benediction. Chaplain. Thank you, Reverend Inman. Let us pray. Divine Parent, again we call upon your eternity of presence in our very human but historically critical ceremony. As we exit this special ceremony of Commissioner George Prescott Bush of the Texas General Land Office, remind us, God, of the African theologian John Mbiti when he stated in an embracing narrative, I am because you are, and since you are, therefore I am. Indeed, we cannot forget nor overlook the prophetic words of Victor Hugo when he pushed others of leadership to know, to the living, we owe respect. To the dying, we owe the truth. Help us, God, to understand the importance of this historical and prophetic challenge. While the late Mother Teresa pointed to the world after winning the Nobel Peace Prize for clear direction while pursuing global empathy, and in this country's sake, human clarity stated, I am a pencil in the hands of God. And whatever he wants me to write, I will write. Therefore, God, dissuade us in allowing our so-called self-importance to overcome a greater mission, which is to seek the points of light in a time by such leaders as George Prescott Bush, when it is most needed. As we conclude this prayer, help us, God, to embrace the following challenge. I am only a spark, make me a fire. I am only a string, make me a leer. I am only a rag, make me count. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. That concludes the ceremony. Uh, please proceed to uh, events that are going to follow at the UT Club. And um, Governor Bush, in the annals of protocol, governors outrank retired admirals. <laughs> so as you and Mrs. Bush, please lead the procession out. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> I'm not sure that's true, Admiral. <laughs> I'll take it.